Here are today's stories. President Duterte forms an oversight committee in preparation of the entry of a third telco player in the country. Budget Secretary Benjamin Diokno anticipates a 7% growth in the economy in the first quarter of 2018. Improved bilateral ties between the Philippines and China result in more business investments in the country. And the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency eyes having offices in major ports to prevent the smuggling of illegal drugs. Good day, I'm Pia Rosas Marato. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. President Rodrigo Duterte has ordered the creation of an oversight committee for the entry of a third major telecommunications player in the country. Under Administrative Order No. 11, the panel will assist the National Telecommunications Commission in forming provisions in assigning radio frequencies for the new telco player. All concerned agencies have been directed to provide support to the NTC and to the committee to streamline and expedite the issuance of permits, licenses, and certificates. The order said the entry of a new major telco player will benefit the public by ensuring genuine competition. The Department of Information and Communications Technology announced that the selection of the third telco player is expected to be made before the President delivers his third State of the Nation address in July. Duterte has repeatedly expressed his disappointment over poor internet and mobile phone services in the country. Telco players from China, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, and India have signified their interest to invest in the Philippines' telecommunications industry. The 2018 first quarter SWS survey showed President Rodrigo Duterte continued to get a very good rating despite a slight decline. In a survey conducted from March 23 to 27 to 1,200 respondents, the SWS found 70% of adult Filipinos were satisfied with Duterte's performance. 17% were undecided and 14% were dissatisfied. The SWS said this gives a net satisfaction rating of plus 56, classified as very good or two points below plus 58 from last quarter of 2017. The survey says the president still has excellent net satisfaction rating while it fell by one grade from very good to good at plus 39 in Balance Luzon and stayed at very good in Metro Manila. Duterte's net satisfaction rating was at plus 64 three months after he assumed office in June 2016. The Bureau of Customs seized the 40-foot container of used clothing at the Manila International Container Port. Customs agents uncovered 2.1 million pesos worth of ukay ukay from the shipment of ProLine Logistics Philippines Incorporated. Commissioner Isidro La Pena said the shipment was declared as personal effects and household goods. An alert order was issued on March 7 to prevent the release of the banned shipment which arrived from Hong Kong on February 27. The cargo will undergo seizure and forfeiture proceedings for violation of the prohibition of commercial importation of used clothing and rags. The importer will also face charges for misdeclaring the goods and their customs accreditation may be suspended. The Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board ordered Grab Philippines to reduce its surge pricing cap from 2 to 1.5 times the normal fare effective immediately. The board wants to ensure that the fares would be acceptable to transport vehicle service operators who would transfer to Grab's platform. This amends LTFRB's order that sets a surge price rate of TNCs at twice the normal fare. The board is also giving Uber until April 15 to operate. Grab said it would comply with the order to decrease its surge rates. Grab also said it would comply with the order of the Philippine Competition Commission to maintain the independent business operations of Uber and Grab. The PCC is conducting a review to determine the effect of the Grab-Uber merger on the ride-sharing market as well as its impact on its partner drivers. 
The new panel of prosecutors starts its preliminary investigation on the drug complaint against alleged big-time drug lord Peter Lim, self-confessed drug lord Kerwin Espinosa, and several others. Also named as respondents in the complaint were convicted drug lord Peter Ko, alleged drug supplier Lovely Impal, and several others. The measure would allow the parties, including the police officials, to submit additional evidence to support their respective positions. Last April 6, Lim asked the Department of Justice to conduct a separate preliminary investigation on the illegal drug raps filed against him and his co-respondents. Lim's camp said this is to protect his constitutional right to due process as his defense and the lack of evidence against him might not be given due attention. Still to come, Budget Secretary Benjamin Diokno anticipates a 7% growth in the economy in the first quarter of 2018. Authorities in Cebu seized about 12 million pesos worth of marijuana and shabu. These and more when the PNA Newsroom continues. environmental violation tax reform for acceleration and inclusion of trade Hello po, ako po si Rose, si Rosa D. Nagtatrabaho ko dito sa Hong Kong, tatatang buwan pa lang ako. Pero dati nagtatrabaho sa Europe, talagang the best siyang presidente para sa atin sa Pilipinas. Ang sa akin lang, pagbutihan niya pa lang din kasi yung mga tao hindi naman niya hawak talaga eh. Basta gawin niya lang kung ano yung tama para, para sa Pilipinas. Yung kung ano pang magagawa niya, gawin niya. Yung mga tao na nag-again sa kanya, pabiyaan niya na lang yun kasi hindi naman lahat hindi na hawak ang isip ng mga tao eh. Basta ginawa niya yung para sa kanya, okay na sa akin yun. Para sa akin, okay siya. Yun. Yun lang po. Salamat kay Presidente kasi uh, binibigyan niya opportunity yung mga ibang tao na nagtatrabaho dito sa kahit sa ibang bansa. Yung mga reklamo lang, katulad yung mga katulad sa mga woman right, yung mga karapatan ng mga OFW, yun lang po. Sana yun ang pagpursigyan niya para sa aming mga OFW. Okay lang po. Ako po si Sheila May Hayson, taga Negros, Lumagetic. At tungkol po kay President Duterte, um, okay naman, malaki ang progress sa Pilipinas at saka malaki rin ang naitulong niya sa mga kagaya namin ng OFW. Sana uh, mas mas malawakan pa ang ano, mga kalagayan namin dito sa OFW, especially na doon sa Middle East. President Duterte, salamat po sa malaking progress at saka sa malaking na itulong mo sa peace ng Philippines. Po, ako po si, uh, pangalang po si Rodolfo, tawag sa akin Rudy. Nag-work dito ako sa Hong Kong almost uh, to 28 years sa amo ko as a domestic helper. Sa awa po ng Diyos, uh, dito rin ako naka, nakakita na napag-asawa ko. At sa uh, super support as a dumi, domestic helper, uh, maganda naman yung sitwasyon namin dito. Hindi may maganda yung protection ng government. At sa pagpapatakaran ng bagong anang presidente programa at okay natutuwa dahil sa lahat ng presidente iko-compare ko sa nagdana uh, hinarasyon etong the best na presidente ang na nakikita ko magandang performance kaya bilib na bilib po ako sa Duterte administration sana po uh, ma-blessing siya ng ng mahabang uh, sitwasyon uh, mahabang ano ano tawag to sa sa Malacanang, mabot ulit siya at uh, mapatuloy niya yung uh, uh, magagandang gawain ng presidente sa atin. Budget Secretary Benjamin Diokno is optimistic that the Philippines will achieve a 7% growth in the first quarter of 2018. 
the projected figure falls within the lower end of government's 7 to 8 percent growth target from 2018 to 2022. Growth drivers would be the strong expansion of both the government revenues and spending. Data released by the Department of Budget and Management show that expenditures rose by 26% year-on-year as of end of February 2018 to 469 billion pesos from last year's 373 billion. Last February alone, government spending amounted to 240.3 billion pesos. Spending on infrastructure and other capital outlays as of last January rich reached 43.3 billion pesos. Diokno attributed this to the Duterte administration's Build, Build, Build infrastructure program under which about 1 trillion pesos is scheduled to be spent annually until 2022. The much improved bilateral relation between the Philippines and China has attracted more Chinese investors into the country. The Department of Trade and Industry welcomes the letters of intent of Chinese companies seeking to invest in the country. These letters were signed on the sidelines of the Bao Forum 2018 in China Tuesday, which President Rodrigo Duterte also attended. The LO is reportedly amounted to some 9.8 billion US dollars, which is expected to be invested in the sectors of construction, electronics, agriculture, tourism, and pharmaceutical. An estimated 10,800 jobs will be generated from these investments should they materialize. Trade Secretary Ramon Lopez said they will be adopting new domestic policies and regulations to promote ease of doing business and competitiveness in various industries. Meanwhile, to further boost DTI's presence in China, the agency is activating three offices in Beijing, Shanghai and Guangzhou. DTI is also set to lead the Philippine delegation for the China International Import Exposition in November 2018. The Department of Education and the United Nations Development Program are launching the expansion of ICT and solar power program in Bagumbayan Elementary School in El Nido, Palawan. The computerization and alternative energy projects are aimed at advancing the quality education as one of the UN 17 sustainability development goals. One of the targets is to substantially increase technical and vocational skills of the youth on ICT by 2030. Bagongbayan Elementary School is one of the 4,000 poorly energized public schools in geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas in Luzon and Mindanao that will receive ICT packages. DepEd estimates that 600,000 children will have access to laptops powered by solar energy this year. UNDP Country Director Titan Mitra, on the other hand, said the agency seeks people-centered interventions that translate into better services and lifelong learning opportunities. DepEd ICT Services Director Abram Abanil said, There's a need for Philippine public schools to maximize technology to prepare students for 21st century competencies and careers. The Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency seized about 9 million pesos worth of marijuana plants and 3 million pesos worth of Shabu in separate operations in Cebu. PIDEA agents led a raid at the marijuana plantation in the mountain barangay of Tagbao and uprooted over 22,000 plants and seedlings. Agents also conducted a buy-bust operation in Barangay Lagtang, Talisay City, and recovered 600 grams of shabu and arrested husband and wife, Michelle and Janice Palermo, alleged underlings of self-confessed drug lord Fran Sabalones, who surrendered to police more than a year ago. According to PDEA 7 spokesperson Lea Albiar, the couple was among Sabalones' trusted underlings who have been dealing drugs in Talisay and Cebu City. Albiar said the couple may be getting their supply from the same source of their former boss. President Duterte was lauded by an environmental group in Davao City for his decision to temporarily close Boracay Island starting on April 26. Interface Development Interventions Executive Director Chinky Pelino Goya said the move would make the island rest from being used by businessmen tourists. 
Gole said the island has many environmental issues such as the rampant disposal of waste that flow down to the beach. However, she also aired the social concerns that need to be addressed during the closure period, such as the lack of jobs for workers in the island. Gole said the government should enforce the order issued by the Department of Labor and Employment, which mandates that no retrenchment of employees should take place within the six-month period. She also said the government should provide financial assistance to the displaced workers. Earlier, President Duterte said he would provide a 2 billion peso cash assistance to the displaced and poor people in the island. Up next, the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency is considering offices in major ports to prevent the smuggling of illegal drugs. The U.S. Navy's USS Theodore Roosevelt comes for a port visit in Manila. These and more when the PNA Newsroom returns. Baraka environmental violation. Tax reform for acceleration and inclusion of trade. Matatandaan noon na ang Pasig River ang nagbigay daan sa pagusbong ng komersyo sa kamay nila. Bakit hindi natin muli pakinabangan? Malaki ang may tutulong ng Pasig River Ferry System upang maibsan ang malalang trafiko sa Metro Manila. Nagsimula ito ng operasyon noong 2007. Sa kasalukuyan, may labing dalawang istasyon sa Metro Manila mula sa lungsod ng Maynila hanggang Pasig. Sampung ahensya ng gobyerno ang magtutulong-tulong sa pamamagitan ng Convergence Program for the Pasig River Ferry System upang mapaigting ang Pasig River Ferry System. The plan is really to have a comfortable, predictable, and reliable ferry system. Sa ilalim ng programang ito, tinatayang 29 stations ang magiging operational pagdating ng 2022. Kasama ang 24 operational boats na makapagsasakay ng 76,800 commuters bawat araw. Sa klaw ng mga istasyon na ito, ang karaniwang destinasyon ng commuters. Ang Convergence Program for the Pacific River Ferry System ay magsisimula itong taon na ito, 2018. Sa tulong nito, mas magiging Epektibo at mabisa sa paghatid ng serbisyo ang Pasig River Ferry. Sa pamamagitan ng Pasig River Ferry, tuloy-tuloy ang pagbabago sa epektibo at mabisang paghatid ng serbisyo sa mamamayang Pilipino. Drug Enforcement Agency is set to establish offices in the country's 13 major ports. PDA and the Philippines Port Authority signed a memorandum of agreement to strengthen efforts to counter the smuggling of large volumes of illegal drugs and controlled chemicals. The agency will primarily set up a strategic surveillance and monitoring system to detect drug and chemical shipments. PDS said about 70% of the population lives in coastlines that may become a market for illegal drugs if drug-related shipments enter the country. The USS Theodore Roosevelt and her guided missile escort cruiser, the USS Bunker Hill, are in Manila for a port visit. During the visit, American sailors and Marines will participate in cultural exchanges and community relations activities to enhance cultural understanding and cooperation between the two countries. Carrier Strike Group 9 Commander Rear Admiral Steve Kohler highlighted the Philippines' history with the U.S. Navy saying they are looking forward to continuing that valued relationship. Commanding Officer Captain Carlos Sardiello said, Many sailors and Marines have strong ties to the Philippines, with some being from the country or having family here. The Theodore Roosevelt Carrier Strike Group will continue on its regularly scheduled Western Pacific deployment after departing Manila. 
The USS Theodore Roosevelt left its home port of San Diego, California last October 6 for a regularly scheduled deployment to the U.S. 7th and 5th Fleet areas of operation. The municipal government of Mangaldan, Pangasinan has opened its Museo Mangaldan which features the town's history and culture. The two-story museum houses old photographs and relics backed with stories to show their importance to the town's development. The municipal government started the construction last year with a 2.3 million peso budget from the town's development fund with the help of the University of the Philippines, Baguio, headed by Butch Torrio as curator. Residents and tourists are encouraged to visit Museo Mangaldan, which is open Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mountain Province has adopted Senator J.V. Ejercito as an Igorot son in honor of his contribution to protect farmers in the Cordillera. Here's our report. Senator J.V. Ejercito was proclaimed an adopted son of Mountain Province at the 14th Langay Festival and 51st founding anniversary of the Upland Province. Ejercito was recognized for his creation of the Anti-Agricultural Smuggling Act. The law is a crackdown on large-scale smuggling of agricultural products affecting the livelihood of farmers in the Cordillera region. As an adopted son, Ejercito was given the name Bulanglang, the symbol of hope and prosperity. Bulanglang is also interpreted as the coming of the rain, the season of blossoming and growth after a long dry spell. Governor Bonifacio Lacuasan Jr. said, the people of Mountain Province are proud to call him a son, and just like any father, the province is always open for his visit. Ejercito said he is honored to be called a son of Mountain Province. As chairman of the Senate Committee on Health, Ejercito promised to help the province in improving the Bontoc General Hospital to improve its services. The senator also committed to help the province's tourism through infrastructure projects. During the Langai Festival, the 10 municipalities of Mountain Province joined various activities lined up for festivities, including the street dancing and chanting competition. The municipalities also gathered together to celebrate the 51st founding anniversary of their province. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Abs Abando. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country. Let's take another look at today's stories. President Duterte forms an oversight committee in preparation of the entry of a third telco player in the country. Budget Secretary Benjamin Diokno anticipates a 7% growth in the economy in the first quarter of 2018. Improved bilateral ties between the Philippines and China result in more business investments in the country. And the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency eyes having offices in major ports to prevent the smuggling of illegal drugs. Thank you for watching another edition of the PNA Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, visit the PNA website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it serves the Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. And that's your daily dose of news and information from the PNA Newsroom. I'm Pia Rosas Morato. Good day.